This is the Joseph Roundtree Theatre, um, built in 1935 um, by the Roundtree factory, which was just over the road there. These days it's moved slightly sideways. The original factory building is going to become flats. But Roundtree's being Quakers, cared about the community, their family and their workers, and they wanted things to do in the evenings and in their leisure hours. And so they built the theatre in 1935. Very definitely an Art Deco building, as you will see as we go around, uh, very much of its time, and very definitely a very simplistic design, given that the round trees were, of course, Quaker. And, of course, they didn't drink, which is one of the reasons why they wanted entertainment and things for the workers to do. And so the round tree factory built the theatre and their employees and friends would come here and to rehearse plays, put on plays, uh, music, dancing, etc. And more interestingly, slightly later on, they used to show films here. The workers could come across in their lunch hour and see approximately 20 minutes of a film and by the end of the week you had seen the whole film and then next week there was a different one. The theatre today is volunteer run. We are the Joseph Roundtree Theatre Company and we are all volunteers. Um, we hire out the building to various organisations, all the local musical societies, drama groups, dance schools, whatever. They hire the theatre from us, we provide the facilities and the money that they pay for hiring it goes towards the running costs of the theatre. foyer of the theatre and as I said you will notice the very definite Art Deco style all around. Um, it is a very small space but it's a very welcoming space. Right, um, so as I've mentioned already the, the Roundtree were Quaker and therefore a very simplistic style and this here, this Art Deco is very simplistic. Other Art Deco theatres and buildings you'll go to have much more of what I term the folded rolls. It's curves and whatnot. Here we're very much of these clean straight lines um, and that I think is what makes it unique uh, and it is of course um, often commented on by people that come here and that have never been before. Here we are in the auditorium and as I've said, you will notice the Art Deco theme all the way through the building. Very simplistic, you can see all the way around, and the panelling and all the plasterwork is original, and um, we're very proud of it. We have 366 seats, all of which are unrestricted views. But let's go back to the beginning. When this place was built, it was actually called the Joseph Roundtree Hall. It only became known as the theatre sometime in the late 40s. And that is also the time when it stopped having a stepped auditorium and had a rake put in. The rake is the slope that you walk down so that everybody in the auditorium can see onto the stage quite clearly and easily. So here I am just in front of the stage. Behind me is the orchestra pit. Many of the shows that we have here do bring a live band or orchestra with them. You can fit around about 12 to 14 people in there comfortably, though I have seen slightly more squeezed in, but how they manage to play their instruments is amazing to me. But this um, theatre, as I've said, is very much a community theatre, and the people that are performing here are all from the local groups, but we do also have um, professional companies from time to time. They don't tend to stay um, for a long run because they're generally doing a tour around the north of England. So here I am now on the stage uh, of the theatre and uh, looking out into the auditorium. 
you can see once again what a fantastic Art Deco design it is, and also, and I will always plug this, no restricted views. But if you looked way, way up, um, we are underneath what we call the fly tower. The fly tower is where the scenery and the lighting is stored, kept. But the fly tower here is actually 15 metres high. And if you want that in old-fashioned terms, it's round about 50 feet. Um, but the flying system, which is oh, just over there, it was purpose-made for this theatre. And it was, believe it or not, made in the engineering department across the road in the Round Tree Chocolate Factory. And on that note, we are one of the few community theatres that has got a fly tower uh, and not, don't have to push the scenery on um, from the side and we don't have to climb up ladders to deal with the lights. This is the flying system. There are lines, poles, above the stage, and to each of those is attached um, curtains, scenery, lighting, whatever. And basically, they are flown in. It's a counterbalance system, as you can see here. Uh, basically, you, you counterbalance the weight with the weight of the scenery or lighting that you've put onto the bar, and then these lead weights here will bring it up and down. It's a question of hauling on this rope. Now, there are 22 lines here altogether, um, so whatever they bring in with them, the, the company that's coming in to do the show, um, they can attach their scenery. We, of course, already have um, these curtains of our own attached. We call these legs. They are what shields um, the cast waiting to come onto stage and also the stage crew from the view of the audience. You have to be specially trained to use this. You can't just do it automatically, and we do also say that people should be over 18. Um, it requires a certain amount of physical strength, um, but not an undue amount. Here we are in the stage manager's corner, and as I always say when I'm showing people around the theatre, the stage manager is probably the most important person in a whole show. Never mind your leading lady or man or even your chorus, it's the stage manager who calls the shots. He or she controls the whole show from here. These days, of course, it is very much computer operated and you can see um, the keyboard in front of me and the two um, monitors either side. So the stage manager knows which lights are going on and off when he needs to bring something and it's all pre-programmed um, before when the show is brought in. And um, this is where um, he or she will sit. And of course, they are in touch with the sound desk, the follow spotters, and front of house using these um, headphones here with a microphone attached. So, welcome to the Joseph Roundtree Theatre. I am standing in the pool of light, as you can see. That is what is known as a follow spot. And when you're sitting in the theatre watching the show, you will often see these follow spots. You don't realise, of course, that there is somebody up above your head in the ceiling of the theatre working the follow spots. So, and they are exactly what they sound like. They follow me. So if I move to my left, the follow spot will follow me here. And if I go back to the right, again, it will follow me. So there we are, follow spots. All those people working up there. So the next time you're here, just give a thought to those individuals up there working their little socks off to make sure that people on stage look good, like I do right now. OK, so here we are in the roof of the theatre, the follow spot loft. And just behind me here is one of the follow spots. The operator of the follow spot can uh, vary the focus from very clear, bright white, to fuzzy, to hazy. It can use different colours, um, maybe a pale yellow or a pink, depending on what the show itself would call for. But this person, of course, is going to be up here for the length of the show. Um, this is one of my favourite places. Um, it, when I come to a show, rather than working downstairs at front of house, if I come to 
see a show, I like to buy my seat up here in the balcony. Um, because as you can see, the view of the stage is amazing. And of course, the sound is even better up here. It's good downstairs, but it's even better up here because it rises, of course. So also, you get to see when you're up here, again, the art deco detailing of the ceiling and the proscenium arch, etc. And while we're up here, I would point out that behind me um, are the little windows that were the projection room. Remember I told you at the beginning that you used to show films here for the Roundtree factory workers? Well, just behind me there um, are the windows of the projection room, and that is where the great big cinematic projectors were located. And you can imagine... But this is where... Um, all the sound on the stage is controlled from, whether it be microphones or on the performers, whether it be recorded music for one of the dance schools or sound effects um, like gunshot, bell ringing, etc. will all be from here. The block here beside me, you can plug in um, an MP3 player, it has a, a CD um, slot, so you can play CDs, and you can also plug in your laptop if you have the music on there. And then, as I said, this bit here controls mainly the microphones um, for the, uh, in the orchestra pit, of course, as well as the ones on the performer. Right, so we are behind the stage in the backstage corridor. This is where you will find the dressing rooms, um, toilet facilities for, for the cast, and, of course, storage area for props, etc. Now you can well imagine that if there's a show on, this back corridor is quite busy with people or being very, very quiet because you mustn't make a noise when you're backstage because that will detract from what's happening on stage. But I'm going to take you into a dressing room and, in, and show you what a dressing room looks like. When I bring people on a tour around the theatre, I would say this is where it stops being glamorous. The glamorous bit's out the front. This is the basic work inside of everything. But if you'd like to come with me, we're going to go into one of the dressing rooms. So, a dressing room. This is where you put on your makeup, your wig, your costume, along with all your um, colleagues in the show. This is the, one of the female dressing rooms. Uh, we have four dressing rooms, two large ones and two smaller ones. This end of the um, building is officially the female uh, and the other end is male. But of course, that can vary depending on of the size of cast, it could be an all-female show, um, especially one about suffragettes and things like that. But this is a dressing room. As I said, not particularly glamorous, but they're very, very necessary. Mirrors and lights so you can get your makeup on your hair right, and hooks and racks to hang your outdoor clothes on um, when you're wearing your stage costume. And they all link together um, so you can, as I say, configure it whichever way you like. in the side corridor of the theatre and as you can see behind me there's a large wooden board uh, there's another one just across there these are war memorial boards one from the first world war and the one i'm in front of from the second world war now as i've already said roundtree were quaker and therefore don't um, condone uh, war and, and violence but roundtree were very good and they said to all the men that worked in the factory if they wished to join the troops and go and fight for their country, then it was fine for them and they would have a job when they came back. These, sadly, are some of the guys who didn't come back. Now, we've only just recently acquired these for the theatre. For many, many years, they were in the dining block, which these days, of course, is the Nuffield Hospital. And Nestle took over, they were, the, host, the dining block was sold off to the um, hospital and these were put into storage and basically forgotten about. But recently, somebody from Nestle had the foresight to contact us and say, would you like them? We, of course, jumped at the chance and we have installed them here in the corridor of the theatre. And we have a little brass plaque just on the wall there to let people know when they came and how we got them. So, I've mentioned that we hire out the theatre to lots of local uh, amateur dramatic societies, music societies, etc. But in those societies, often it's where the, uh, people that we now 
consider famous, started their career here in the theatre. And the photograph to the side of me here, the black and white photograph from 1964, shows one David Bradley, who started his acting career here. He, of course, is well known to millions of people, especially for his roles um, in the Harry Potter movies. But apart from David Bradley, um, there's been many other people here. You may remember Jean Alexander, who of course was Hilda Ogden in Coronation Street and later on Auntie Wainwright. And of course Janet McTeer also started um, here and um, Ian Kelsey has also performed on this stage. More recently, when Made in Dagenham was being produced here, Scott Garnham um, came along to talk to us and he too had been on the Joseph Roundtree stage um, as part of an amateur group. These days um, he is um, a producer but he has starred in the West End. So not just local people but also well-known people as well. And one very special lady, Dame Judy Dench, has been here and according to what she'd written in one of her blogs, she was actually kissed by a certain gentleman when they were out on the roof looking at the sunset. Which gentleman, she doesn't say, but we do know that Judy definitely said she was kissed on the roof of the Joseph Roundtree Theatre. Well, I hope you've enjoyed your tour of the theatre. Um, I hope you found it interesting. As you've gathered, I do love showing the theatre off. Um, we'd also like to thank you for your continued support over the last year and we look forward to welcoming you back to the theatre very, very soon. Bye now.